Welcome back to the lesser spotted pocket rocket that is the Audi S1 Quattro that rarely features on this channel. But it's good to be back. Now, there have been some fundamental changes take place to this little vehicle that quite frankly have added a lot more playful character than I expected. Yes, I have entered the realm of tuning. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that my level of tuning pretty much stops at an exhaust. Most of the cars that I've owned, normally I'm really happy with just the minimal augmentation of an exhaust, and that is mostly just to open up that other level of emotion, that audible delight that you get that gives you that connection with the car. However, the S1 Quattro is a funny little beast because on paper it reads really well. And don't get me wrong, as a fundamental platform it is a fantastic little car. However, since the day I have owned this thing, there have been two things, two features that I thought the S1 could deal with. Subtle upgrades that I thought, you know what would be great is if number one, the car's ride height was just a little bit lower. Like it looks really good. But I can see the like subtle flares in the arches and its cheeky little demeanor would be enhanced if it was just dropped a tiny bit. And the number one thing is the power. Now on paper, 228 brake horsepower in a Quattro all-wheel drive, little pocket rocket Audi sounds ample. And by and large, it is. However, Audi have built this thing so good, you can drive the wheel bolts off it and it just wants more. And it's not that it feels underpowered, it just feels that it can deal with so much more. It's got loads of grip with it being Quattro, and also the chassis is such that it can just deal with so much more power. So anyway, I did a little bit of poking around, and uh, as the chance would have it, there is a company that I'm sure you're all aware of called Apt. They operate out of Germany, and uh, while they do specialize in tuning Audis, I wouldn't necessarily do them the injustice of calling them a tuning company. They are more of an engineering company. They have deep roots in racing, and importantly, and this is one of the main reasons why I went with Apt, is that they have a very close working relationship with Audi themselves. We'll get on to that later, but let's just go into what has happened to the car. So. In the UK, the official distributor of Abt products and fitment, I would say, is done by a wonderful company called Richter Sport. Those guys are based down in Milton Keynes, and I spoke with a wonderful gentleman there called Neil, who put my mind to rest that this tuning thing is all good. Now, I'm new to the tuning scene, so what I didn't want to do was slap on a new ECU that was going to scramble the brain of this car and throw a rod through the engine. Now, absolutely counter to that, the results have been fantastic. Anyway, I'm getting carried away with the excitement of what's happened with this car. So first process was to lower the ride height. It has been dropped 30 millimeters. Doesn't sound much. However, the overall road presence of this now, it just has a much more aesthetic squat to it. The rears haven't been done yet and the fronts have. So if we take a look at this, hopefully the camera will show it. This is the original ride height, which now compared to the new 30 mil ride height is night and day. Look at it. This is almost like an SUV at the back now. Looks really cool, but it's just the right amount of drop. I love that it's maintained the same profile with the tire. It's not too low, so it's dipping inside the arch. And it's been calculated perfectly. And if we go over to the original, look at the difference. Look at the gap in that. Fit my whole hand in there. If we go back to here, much, much tighter. It's perfect. Of course, tuning isn't just about aesthetics. Ultimately, by dropping the ride height 30 mil, you've dropped the center of gravity 30 mil as well. And I've got to tell you, I know it's often the case that when we're talking about hot hatches that we liken them to big go-karts. As a result of these springs, and these are also apt performance springs, it just handles the delight. It rides so much flatter. The compromise has been that there is a slight increase in stiffness. I wouldn't say it's uncomfortable by any margin. It still feels great. But I have noticed that under sort of more sharper bumps, you can pick up on a little bit more of a stiffer ride quality. It hasn't compromised the enjoyment of the car, but it's definitely there. However, it entirely makes up for it when you're threading it down these tight British B roads. We've got these wonderful winding roads in our 
resplendent countryside and this thing eats it up. Now together with that, and here's where the magic really happens, Abt offer a ECU remap. Raise the car's brake horsepower to around about 310 brake, so that's around about an 80 horsepower increase from its standard 228 horsepower. All of these connectors are original um, Bosch connectors from the proper manufacturer, so, so it's the same as the original Audi parts. So basically where your original ECU is, we unplug the two connectors, we plug that into here, these two return onto your original ECU, mm -hmm. and then these two go off to the apt controller. So basically there's no cutting, no joining, no opening up, no tampering yeah. of any ECUs. So that's a specific S1 Tudic TFSI loom. So there's three versions of app software. We'll always go for the latest version. Okay. Version three. Gearbox type is manual. This is now talking to Abt servers? It will do in a second, yeah. Transfer yep. to my laptop. <laughs> Downloading the data set. It's got that. Yeah. Now it's going from my computer to the AEC and it's showing that the AEC has been powered up awesome. by the power supply. So it's, it's literally downloading its settings from Abt? Yes, from their servers in Kempton. That's very cool. Okay, so if you're wondering what all the sparks were in the engine bay, it's all good. There is just some safety screws which were attached to the original ECU of the car that upon tightening them at the factory, the heads snap off. It just means that thieves can't come in and swap the ECU out easily. So they were just cutting in some new grooves in the old screws to make sure that they could get them out okay. All good. The results are immediately tangible. It's not night and day, but an 80 horsepower gain with no extra weight, it's the same car, it is noticeable, like it is really there. Amazingly, it's actually the top end, which for a turbo car is interesting because often is the case with more pedestrian turbo engines. They are there kind of for efficiency. And as a result, at the top end of the rev band, you're not always getting that punch that you might expect. With this, the punch is there. It kind of feels how you would expect it to be. Now to give it a bit of context, this S1 is now pushing out the same realm horsepower as the Audi S3. So you're getting S3 performance in an S1 package. But of course, despite all of this stuff on paper, you guys definitely want to know what this thing feels like to drive. So here we go. <laughs> and that's where it is. There's the punch you paid for. It's the top end torque. And this is exactly how you would imagine an S1 to feel. This is how I believe they should have felt out of the box. It's just right, it's got enough power now to be entertaining. And with this lovely suspension setup, it now has the balance to flow this new momentum you've got through these wonderful British B roads. You've got this small piece of tarmac, how are you gonna make the most of the momentum you find yourself with? And things like this are great. I mean, I am in the depths of the countryside right here. And honestly, if you were down some of these roads with a big supercar, I don't think you'd be covering ground anywhere near as comfortably because even in this thing I find that I'm breathing in sometimes. But yeah, it's it's very evidently there. I can tell that it's got a really lovely amount more torque. Right, around about four and a half. Woof, there it goes. <laughs> Between four and a half thousand up to 6,000 RPM. I don't know why I'm surprised, but that's where the majority of the power seems to be. I kind of expected it to be low to mid-end, but I'm happy to report that when you rinse this thing out, it's thick with torque and it's lovely. To brake horsepower up to 310, but I think because it's a turbo engine, you're really starting to feel it in yourself as a driver in the actual torque loads, and that, that feels great. By the way, we did dyno the car. It wasn't to tell us the official output uh, because it transpires that with the uh, Haldex four-wheel drive system, you have to have a very sophisticated dyno in order to calibrate it properly. To give you an idea, the dyno which this car was tested on after we fitted it at Richter Sport, I think the value of that was around about 100,000 pounds. Sounds a lot of money. The dyno that developed the ECU on I was informed was over 10 million euros. Yeah, 
<laughs> so, so, don't get me wrong, dyno process on this car was awesome, but the real magic has been in the development of the brain, and that's where this thing ticks all of the boxes, and that's what's important. So the guys at Abt have really nailed it. I mean, the idea of Richter putting the car on a dyno was mostly just to see if the upgrade had worked, and it was effectively turned on. And lo and behold, the graph said it was lovely. Now, how it feels, is just right. It doesn't feel overly powerful. It just feels kind of how I always wanted it to feel. And so I've kind of got confidence now that nothing on it is overstressed. It's just right. Of course, at the same time as lowering the ride height of the car, the guys at Richter then have to realign the wheels. So we sent it to their alignment partner, that they stuck it on the ramp, got it all perfect. And it's these little things, the overall service and quality of my experience that day was awesome. It was a full day job and they just nailed it. I was, to be honest, a little bit hesitant really to go through with this whole process because I didn't know what it would do. However, and I know lots of people out there will be asking, what's it done to the warranty? Well, anything outside of the engine is still covered by the Audi warranty on this car, albeit this is almost three years old and the warranty will be up soon anyway. However, what Abt have done is they basically have their own warranty partner. So if anything goes wrong with the engine, even though Audi themselves don't cover it, Abt and Richter will work with you to fix it with their warranty partners. So I'm happy with that. Uh, and it will still go through the official dealer channels if something went wrong. <laughs> it is plenty fast enough. What a little weapon. Honestly, and it sits so flat. I gotta tell you, we're actually carrying some pace here. Honestly shocked. I really didn't believe there'd be that much of a change. That, I, I, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But it was just a chip. <laughs> like, that's so cool. You know, my friends did tell me, once you go down this tuning thing, it's like a black hole, like that's it. You'll get lost and you'll get addicted and it'll be all kinds of crazy. I'm, I'm quite happy about that, that's, that's cool. So who knows, this might turn into a raging mental project car. <laughs> yes, I can see it now, stripped out entirely. Carbon buckets, sequential gear shift. No, actually, let's keep the manual. The manual's cool, but I think it's gonna need a clutch upgrade to deal with the kind of crazy talk I've got in mind. <laughs> As always, guys, thanks for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao!